Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and a uh, couple of months back I did a video about some of the eye candy scenes you can use for showing off Grid 04's graphical capabilities. We looked at things such as the uh, Sponza demo, uh, the Lumberyard demo, the Grid 04 third person sample, and what we're doing today is showcasing two more that have been released since. Now this first one was released earlier this week, it's called Desert Lights. It's not a super complicated scene by any means, but it does show off graphical rendering uh, in the Grid 04 game engine where you don't normally see, so if you're going for more of that um, stylized World of Warcraft kind of look. Uh, that is what they're demonstrating here. And what you're also seeing is a flip back and forth between a day and a night life cycle. Uh, and during the uh, day, we're seeing some um, light shafts coming in. This is using voxelized global illumination, by the way. Uh, so you can sort of see how this example works. If you want to jump in and dig it apart, we're going to let it run first. We'll let it do one full pass back and forth. There's a number of settings you can configure, so you can actually come in here and take control of it. There's a couple of graphics rendering effects you can turn on and off, but you get an idea of the lighting capabilities of Godot 4 in this demo. Again, the map itself is really just what you see here. There's not a ton of assets in here. It's more about the rendering settings that I think you would be interested in. So uh, we'll get to that door, and then I'll show you some of the uh, configurable settings, and then we'll move on to the other examples. So this one is uh, an open source project that is hosted up on GitHub. I will have all the relevant links in the article down below. So if you want to look at how to set up your scene to use like this kind of lighting and effects, well, you can do so. So as I mentioned earlier on, you can hit escape at any particular time and you will find you've got control you can switch over to uh, first person control you can also speed up and slow down the day night cycling speed um, we also have a number of settings over here now interestingly enough what i do find is if i come over here if you don't like the bars by the way the bars can be turned off so you can use it full screen here uh there is msaa and for some reason especially if i go to 8x that is a performance killer big time two times not too bad but that one i definitely notice it hits on performance everything else isn't too bad so for example i can turn on temporal anti-aliasing uh, and no real ramifications although i do start to see little space sperm <laughs> sparkle effects show up I, I don't know what that is but again you got a number of different graphics settings you can play around with here uh so i'm going to turn temporal anti-aliasing back off and we can also even go up to ultra quality rendering category and get things looking even better and I do actually prefer the cinematic bars. I'm curious if you do as well. So that there, ladies and gentlemen, is the example. And we can also go out of here and we can switch over to first person mode if you'd like and walk around the level like this and check out things as they go. So, uh, again, not a gigantic level, but it does show you how um, the Godot 4 renderer can be used to create this kind of thing. And again, you got this nice uh, light setting going on. And this one is using voxelized global illumination instead of sign distance fields. And that actually makes sense because it's an enclosed space. So that is a demo number one. All right. So let's exit out of that guy and we'll switch over to demo number two. And here we are in demo number two. This one, again, is open source as well. This is uh, just a graphic demo of a subway scene. Uh, there's a couple of neat things going on here. Some of the art assets are definitely a little bit on the lower resolution end, uh, but that's, you know, easily updated. Again, we have lighting going on. This one instead is actually using light maps. So interestingly enough, neither of the new example actually decided to use the sign distance field global illumination in what they did. So this is a... Um, so you can see a variety of light probes in the scene. You see the level and how it's being lit. There is the outside world and so on. So if you want to create this kind of game world, that is what this demo is showcasing. There is a, a, a character controller and so on in here. We also have some uh, soft body physics being demonstrated as well. Also have a gray screen. Okay, here we go. So let's go ahead and load that in. All right, so here we are in the level and... All right, we're chugging for a second, we're just loading some assets in. You do have a flashlight you can toggle on and off. This curtain here is an example of a soft body physics controller right there. So if you want to see how these things work, this demo will showcase that for you. Again, you got nice lighting. This one is using um, baked lighting uh, in this case, but uh, a Godot, for example, uh, all the content is via the uh, Blender importer. All the assets are there as well if you want to check that out. Uh, so this is example number two. And as you see, you've got a uh, first-person controller built in here as well if you want to check that out. So you do have the ability to jump and so on. Uh, this is an entirely open source project as well. Uh, so if you're looking kind of like how does how do I set up uh, 
a, a Doe 4 rendering scene. We've got two different examples here. One showing you a more stylized approach uh, using voxelized global illumination. We have another one uh, showing how to do it in a more traditional approach, and this time using baked light maps. Uh, so, and, and the nice thing is that first example should run perfectly well on a Steam Deck level hardware. You do have some controls over this, so you can turn SSIL, SAO, and Glow all off. And you can toggle the, the view PS, the FPS visibility, and so on. And then we have the final example in this one. And this one is a photorealistic uh, RPG style game. Now, this one's actually an old one. This one is from a couple of years back. It's a, a 2D demo from GD Quest uh, showing how to create, you know, the, the attributes of an RPG game. So you've got uh, characters, you've got pathfinding through the world, you've got uh, following of a path like this guy right here. Uh, so it's a template for creating a 2D style RPG game. Now, this actually was published years and years ago. The reason why I'm mentioning it today is it was just ported up to Godot 4. So, if you're interested, uh, the RPG template has been, or I guess it's the open RPG sample, it now runs on Godot 4 as well. So, as I mentioned earlier on, we did that article back in March, showcasing some of the demo scenes that were out there at the time. So, we've got the Godot third-person demo, the Sponza, uh product from Intel. These aren't really game ready. They're very unoptimized, but they're also super high resolution. So if you really want to push it to the max, a good sample there. And then probably one of the sexist examples out there is the Lumberyard Bistro, which is what this guy is right there. You can check all those out in action in that video. And in terms of the stuff that we covered today, uh, the Desert Light sample here was just published uh, the other day and just updated a couple hours ago. Uh, this one, again, showcases uh, graphics or focuses on volumetric fog and indirect illumination. Uh, so if you want to jump in and learn more about that, it's available there. Uh, so interestingly enough, every single Godot project you're ever going to see, uh, Hugo is seemingly a contributor. So he helped contribute on this one sort of some performance optimizations. And let's see, is Hugo on this one? Is he? No, no contributor list here. So who knows? Uh, so this is the uh, Godot 4 Overgrown Subway example. Uh, this one, I don't know why it's not showing up right there. Oh, it's multiple licenses. So CCA for the assets and MIT license for the code. Uh, the earlier example uh, was, I believe, under the MIT license, but okay, no strict license defined. Okay, they, that's unfortunate. Hopefully a license gets added uh, in here. It's, there's nothing as of right now, um, but yeah. So that is the, a bit of a trick there, unfortunate. And then, of course, the Godot Open RPG was recently updated as well. So it, it is now available and working with Godot 4, uh, which is an interesting development. And where you're going to find the majority of the interest, especially if you check out this desert one, it's here. It's in the this uh, settings for how they configured the world environment, uh, how things were set up for like the fog and the glow effects and so on. Uh, definitely some interest there. You can also see how the voxel global illumination volume was set and configured here. So as you see how it's encompassing the entire game world, etc. So if you want to jump in and kind of learn some graphical techniques, where you're really going to want to start uh, is in the world environment here this guy right there the environment aspect of it i don't think there's actually a camp no so there's no camera environment set up so how everything is configured once again none of them are actually using sign distance field global illumination none of them are really environments where sign distance field global illumination actually makes sense to use so uh yeah uh, but yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that is uh, two new uh, examples for Godot 4, so uh, both of them up on GitHub. Hopefully the one gets added uh, a license for it. The Godot 4 Overgrown Subway demo does have a good license going on right now. The Desert Lights, no license yet, so hopefully something gets added there in the future. Uh, but if you're wondering how Godot 4 graphics work, you want to start with a template or somewhere to work from, this gives you two options. Also the... Um, what was it actually called? The uh, Godot Open RPG has been ported. So again, this is an old project. I think I actually did a video about it way back in the day. But all that code has been ported forward to Godot 4. So if you are looking to create a JRPG style um, JRPG, uh, that could be a good starting point for you as well. And now ported up to use Godot 4 and the new GD script and all that stuff as well. So let me know what you think. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.